want to make DJ Pro feel like it was made just for you. In this video, I'm going to show you some secret settings that you might not have known existed. This video is sponsored by Murica AI, an amazing AI music generation software, and all of the songs I'm using in this tutorial were created in Murica AI. The first custom setting I want to show you is one that I got asked a lot in my comments. And that is this button down here. People were asking, how did I get this single cube button? If you go to the middle button and then you go to settings and go to appearance, right up here we have cue points, start cue button. It's a little confusing, but this one says Q. This one says Q, but you probably started in set and jump. So look down here, set and jump or Q. So now let me show you what set and jump does. Set and jump means you pick a spot. So we're going to pick right here. And then we're going to press set. And now this button over here, the jump, is going to jump to that cue point no matter where you are in the song. So let's say we're over here. If we press the jump, it'll jump right there. But now if we go to the middle button and we change that setting to just Q. So now if we change this setting, we're going to lose the jump feature, but we still get the set. So Q is over here. We're going to choose a spot in the song over here. And then we are going to press Q. Down now, slow back. Down now, slow back. And then we get Q in our track. This is good for beat matching. And then if we go somewhere else in the track and press it again, it's going to set the temporary cue point there. So it's whatever you feel is going to be better for your DJing style. I'm used to the cue single button, so I'm going to leave it there. But while we're talking about cue, there is a, another custom setting that we could do with our cue points. And that is we go back to appearance and now we have style. Style. You have either high contrast or low contrast. So high contrast, you see the nice bright buttons. It looks really good. If we go to low contrast, you just see the arrow is lit up with the color. So I like it on high contrast. It's easier to see where your cue points are. And while we're talking about cue points, you could press the pencil button over here and you could change the color of the cue points. So if you're doing start cue points, you could set it as green and cue points, you could set it at, at red, whatever works for your style of DJing. And this will be expressed in your controller if you have RGB pads, which is super cool. Now let's go to the waveforms. So here we are in pro mode, the part of the app where we get the most features at the same time. And we have our waveforms up here. Our waveforms are small and they are vertical right now, but if you want horizontal, you could switch them. So you're probably gonna be in horizontal mode. So this is a horizontal view of your waveforms. It's a lot easier to see. If you press the down arrow, you could change it to vertical. I don't recommend doing it if you're going to be in this setting. I'll recommend it in another setting. I'll show you that in a second. But this is a little bit harder to see. You have less waveforms to work with. But if you do this other custom feature and press whichever one you're in down here, these three buttons re represent the, the bottom half of the screen. So we have our library, we have our cue, our looper and sampler. But if you press the button again to have none selected, now we get the biggest view of our waveforms in the whole software. And in this view mode, we get a really great view of the vertical waveforms. If you're used to other softwares like Tractor, then you might be used to these vertical waveform view with no jog wheels. And there you go. That's how you do it. You could also switch it to to vertical here, but I think if you're doing the big view, you should go with the horizontal. So let's just go back over here. So we have horizontal waveforms. If we press the drop down menu again, you could actually see every stem of Neuromix, which is super cool if you use Neuromix a lot. And if you do use Neuromix a lot, you might want to change this setting here in the middle, whether you're in classic or pro mode we have this middle mixer section, but with this hidden button here, you could go from our regular low, mid, and high EQ 
to a full Nero Mix EQ. A lot of people said this is the future of the mixer, the future of DJing. It hasn't really got there yet, but I still believe it is a cool feature. Instead of lows, mids, and highs, you can mix with the drums, harmonics, and vocals. And now that we're in classic mode, we have these big emulated record decks that are super realistic, and you can change the artwork on it. So if we press the middle button here, go back to settings and go to appearance, here it says vinyl. So you could either have show full ar ar artwork picture disc. That's what's here. You see this whole record has the label on it. If we take that feature off, just the middle has the record there. I just think it's super cool to see the album art spinning around. So I would leave that feature on. Next is in auto mix. Auto mix is an amazing feature. It's not cheating. It just is another tool in our toolbox. And you could actually customize it by going by going here in one deck mode this these buttons here are going to have it start the mix in auto mix automatically at a point where you set it so you could have it say i want it to mix in right here and that's where it's going to mix in it's like a cue point but it's only used in auto mix and then let's say i wanted to end the track here Break we could end the track there so with this Every time the song is playing in auto mix, it's gonna start. It's gonna start the mix and end the and mix out where you decide. So if you make your playlist correctly, you could almost have auto mix doing like a pre-made DJ mix, which is super cool. You're just gonna want to make sure you have a certain setting on. So let me go to auto mix. Press this drop-down menu in auto mix. And then down here, use custom defined start points if available. So you're gonna make sure that's on and then wherever you set those start and stop cue points, that is where it's going to be. And the next one has to do, has to do with controllers. So we're gonna go to our settings, MIDI devices. And then if you have a controller plugged in, it is going to be over here. And then we could press that and then we can actually we could, we could actually map any button or knob on any controller. So if there's a feature that's not mapped on your controller, you can map it yourself. And then also, if you have a controller plugged in, we get a whole new view mode that, that you might want, whole view mode that you might like. And then that view mode is called hardware mode. It only appears when there's a controller plugged in. And if you wanna learn all about hardware mode, check out this amazing video right here.